When Ralph Bowers came to work this morning, he was following his daily routine coming in as city manager. But when he got here, he wasn't allowed in the building and was told to leave the property. Now, Matt, as you can see, the damage that was left behind here yesterday when a bus crashed into a power pole with children on board. Today, more parents are using their cell phones to talk, text, to go on Facebook, Twitter. But some groups say that these parents are getting so distracted by their cell phones that their kids are ending up here in the emergency room. Right now, investigators are trying to figure out exactly where the gun came from and did he ever bring the gun to school. Back to you, Matt. Here at the Salvation Army, the line is literally wrapped around the corner. Parents have been standing in line for hours with the hopes of giving their children the ultimate Christmas experience. Now, as this case comes to a close, there's one more trial that awaits, and that is of Hector Rodriguez, who was accused of being an accomplice with Davis in the killings. I'm Simone Davis in Orlando, Local 6. Today, as parents came to pick up their children from Kissimmee Elementary School, they were notified that a student was flashed. Now, Matt, as you can see, the damage that was left behind here yesterday when a bus crashed into a power pole with children on board. Parents remain uneasy after a bus driver crashed into a power line with children on board. Terrifying. Terrifying. It makes my heart pound right now. Florida Highway Patrol says 66-year-old Jack Timmel was making his way up Redbug Lake Road when he ran a red light, crashed into another vehicle, and then slammed into a power pole. John DeRoe says he and his six-year-old son saw it unfold. It was an explosion that happened also from the, the, the wires and everything hitting stuff. And mm -hmm. It was just real scary. I was shaky all day today. Parents say this is the last straw considering this is Timmel's second time running this very red light and crashing in this intersection back in January. And I was just like, he shouldn't be driving anymore. That's for sure. At least not with kids in the car. Now the first time this happened, Timmel was given driving lessons, but now since this is the second accident he's had, we have to wait to hear from the district to see what's going to happen with his job. I'm Simone Davis in Castleberry. Back to you. Right now, police are on the hunt for multimillionaire computer mogul John McAfee, who they believe is associated with the murder of this bar owner. On Sunday, Gregory Fall was found shot dead execution style in his home in Belize. Fall was the owner of Tailgater Smokehouse, a popular bar at the University of Central Florida. John McAfee, the owner of McAfee Antivirus Software, lives only houses down from Falls Belize home. Police believe McAfee may be involved in the murder but have yet to question McAfee because he's been in hiding. Yet while in his secret location, McAfee still let his voice be heard by telling Wired.com that he may be involved in a conspiracy theory and is scared for his life. And the first thing I thought about was, oh my God, yeah, he's a white man, I'm a white man, someone's, you know, the government's finally decided to off me. They got the wrong white man since we're so, you know, we live almost next door. Meanwhile, within the UCF community, confusion is spread amongst the regular customers at Tailgaters, since to them, Fall came off as an overall people person. He was a real nice guy, real, real nice guy. I mean, loved the university, loved to have fun, loved the kids. Now, we tried to talk to the staff of Tailgater Smokehouse, but they have yet to comment on any of the allegations as they wait to hear back from police themselves. Reporting from Orlando, Simone Davis, back to you. When Ralph Bowers came to work this morning, he was following his daily routine coming in as city manager. But when he got here, he wasn't allowed in the building and was told to leave the property. Ralph Bowers, who has served as city manager of Fruitland Park for six years, is now under investigation after one of his staff members made a claim that Bowers sexually harassed her. Most of the staff at City Hall didn't expect for Bowers to be in this position. Uh, I think a lot of people have been very surprised uh, by this. But City Commissioner Jim Richardson is not surprised at all and believes it was only a matter of time before Bowers found himself in trouble. And I told the commission, but I've repeatedly told them of all these, his escapades, his um, inappropriate behavior. Lake County police say as of now the assault is only an allegation, but Richardson feels that this should be the end of the road for Bauer's career. 
hopefully they will terminate him. Uh, if they don't, uh, we'll have to get in touch with the governor and see if he'll step in and remove the man from office. Until the outcome of the investigation, Bowers has been suspended with pay. And in his absence, the city clerk will be taking his place as city manager. I'm Simone Davis in Lake County, Local 6.